everyone. Thank you Hello. for coming. It's good to have you this it's afternoon. I guess it's two minutes afternoon here where we are. I am so excited to introduce you to my brother. This is Kevin Paulson. And uh, he is, so I'm the oldest of seven. And Kevin is number five. <laughs> and he it has a twin brother. So they were the beloved twins. <laughs> <laughs> I was 11 when Kevin and Kyle were born and uh, stayed up some nights <laughs> with myself. <laughs> so, that so was it, dad's turn to take care of the kids, right? It was actually. Yep. yep. <laughs> that was a heavy sleeper. <laughs> So it's so good to have you. We are going to talk about homeschool PE, which is not something um, we really did when I was homeschooled. And it's something I've not been very good at with my kids. But it, uh, Kevin did some homeschool PE by the time his uh, years, his elementary and middle school years rolled around. <laughs> my, with me and my mom learned that just telling us to go outside didn't necessarily mean that we would exercise. We just, my bro, you know, next soul's brother would, and I would just like sit under a tree and read outside and was like, well, we're outside. <laughs> I think that was part of the problem is Kyle and I weren't as into the books as much. So we would actually probably make a little too much noise for <laughs> so mom to go, okay, get them out of here. <laughs> well, it paid off because Kevin and Kyle went to the local high school and were on the cross country team and uh, did pretty well in cross country. It was fun. And then, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Kevin, and what you're doing now. Yeah. So like Misty said, I'm her fourth, fourth sibling. Uh, as of right now, I'm married to my high school sweetheart. Uh, we have two kids together. Uh, I graduated from Eastern Washington University with a degree in exercise science in 2017. I've been a personal trainer for seven years. The last five have been at a local health club. Uh, I've also been an assistant cross country coach at my uh, alma mater, my high school, Kamaikan High School, uh, for the last four years. And right now I'm kind of transitioning to more online stuff because I'm working on getting my clinical doctorate in physical therapy, also at Eastern Washington. I didn't know it was a doctorate you were after. Yes, doctorate. Oh my, oh I was going to send you an email when you said master's. I was like, oh. Yeah, like that's just. <laughs> yeah, that's not me. <laughs> Whoa. How long are you going to be away? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Three years. I'll graduate in 2024. 20, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's me right now. Yeah. Kids keep you busy, as you all know. That's uh, right. So much fun to have. <laughs> so as we talk during this workshop, feel free to ask questions. If um, I will try to keep track in the chat, but sometimes I can't keep track of what's going on in the chat. So if you want us to answer your question, then put it in the ask a question slot and we'll try to make sure we get to those. And um, my hope for this workshop for the next like half hour or so is that we realize how important exercise is, even though like I would really rather not admit that it is the truth. And so uh, we need to kind of realize um, how much it affects everything else and not just, it's not just a, a weight issue. Um, it, it affects all of our lives because we're whole connected beings. And so our bodies affect our minds and um, we need to train our bodies as well as our minds. So I think we tend to fall into the 
put ourselves into like a dichotomy where it's like, I'm either a reader or a sports person. <laughs> and uh, I think we can do, we can do better. We don't have to fall into those, like I'm this or that. We, we can grow in all of those areas and not just the ones that we prefer and um, ignore the ones that we don't prefer or aren't naturally good at. It, there's still value in developing those areas that don't come naturally to us. So probably more value <laughs> than developing the ones that come naturally. 100%. Yes. So, uh, so Kevin, what did you do for staying active when you were homeschooled as a like 10 to 13 year old or so? So my mom kind of had a similar issue, like uh, the people in the chat have said like, okay, what do I do with my kids? And uh, the health club that I worked at for the last five years, when I was, I went there for homeschool PE, co-op kind of a thing where just local homeschool kids got together in the gymnasium. The club had, wasn't exactly a trainer, but it was like the kids coordinator. And we played games, we had relays, you know, basketball, not so much football, but plenty of relays and other just kind of silly things that you could probably do in your, your backyard. But it wasn't any like exercise routine where, you know, we did push ups and squats and it was just, hey, here's a basketball, you know, here's a soccer ball, stuff like that. And um, that's that's what we did up until high school. And then we joined the Kyle and I joined our cross country team and you know that's about as athletic as we were as well basketball wasn't in the picture football definitely not in the picture just one foot in front of the other as fast as you can essentially because <laughs> yeah that's about uh my athletic you know I see a lot of people say no I'm not athletic it's like hey me too I am not athletic as just just like you but I can I can do something so um, what do you think, when you say I'm not athletic or you hear people say you're not athletic, like what do you think people generally are thinking of when they think of being athletic? Dribbling a basketball, throwing a, a baseball or a football or something, you know, catching or throwing. That's kind of my go-to athletic mindset. Like Say, yeah, I don't do sports. It's the same thing. It's like, well, running is a sport, but <laughs> it's not what you go to, it's not what comes to your mind at first. Yeah. So what would be the difference between running and sports? Well, you can do it for fun, which is what I've kind of transitioned since I graduated high school. Uh, you know, I did it as, as best as I could, but no college scholarships came my way, which is all right. Had other things to focus on. Um, but outside of that, I mean, you're not, you can make it as competitive as you'd like. And that's what I like about running is if I just want to go out and have a nice, simple trot down the neighborhood, I could do that. If I want to spice it up with some workouts, like, you know, 12 times 400 meter repeats or something like that, I can. If I want to enter the local turkey trot or the fun run, and try to win my age group or win the whole thing, I can. If I don't want to, I don't have to. <laughs> As opposed to like in a competitive like high school environment, it's like, hey, you have a race every single weekend and we have to keep you sharp for, yeah. you know, six months out of the 12. Yeah. Kind of take in, you know, your weekends are essentially taken up you're either traveling two or four hours out somewhere and two and four hours back kind of an ordeal well well whereas if i wanted to travel now for fun if i want to go to astoria and do the great columbia crossing i can if i don't want to that's all right so you know i don't know if you want to talk about um back as a a middle school homeschool kid or yeah. And doing exercise and how that, you know, the homeschool PE class, was that only, that was only once a week, right? Uh, twice. Twice a week. Like a Monday, okay. Wednesday kind of a thing. So did you notice that that 
affected other things? Did, what kind of benefit did you see from doing that kind of a class? You know, you, you definitely want to sit down and focus on something else for a while. When you've been up and running and moving and doing exercise, you know, you, you're not really tempted. You know, you got all your energy out. You don't really want to scream or yell or <sighs> run around the house anymore. You just want to sit down, uh, drink some water or some coffee or something, whatever your kids uh, like, and you, you just want to focus on, on something else. Focus on, you know, not so much your muscles hurting anymore, but you want to get your mind working. Yeah. And and now you're back in school. Yes. So it, how it is and it's a, it's a and all that? Yeah. Playing it's, in. from high school, you know, I was active. I was active in college as well. And when I did it, I did it more for me in college. And my, I think I noticed a big improvement for in my grades when I was in college, mainly because I was doing, you know, I wasn't doing it for my teammates. I wasn't doing it for my coach. I was doing it because you know, you know, something I wanted to work towards. And yeah, my grades, I wasn't magna cum laude, I was just cum laude, which was, which I'm pretty proud of. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exercise can only do so much. <laughs> I can't guarantee 4.0s, but I can, you know, there are plenty, plenty of research showing that exercise definitely helps with scholastic activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, concentration. And exactly. I mean, you have to be able to sit still to do school. <laughs> exactly. And you want to want to, you know, you want to want to sit down. And that's right. what exercise definitely does. Yeah. So how about that transition from um, doing the exercise for some other reason to yourself? Where do you think that transition comes from? Or how how did that happen? Definitely. You know, if I didn't participate in cross country in high school, if I didn't, and my dad kind of, I, I, I didn't make that decision myself. My dad kind of forced me into <laughs> doing something. And uh, if I didn't, wasn't pushed into it, I didn't, I wouldn't know how much I liked it. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped doing it for like a, a month or two. And I realized I really miss it. You know, you feel antsy. You can't really sit still. You can't really sleep too well. You can't focus on anything. And so a transition to doing it for, you know, because my dad told me to, and then I kind of liked it. And I like the atmosphere of it to, you know, I needed, essentially needed to do it mm -hmm. to stay me. <laughs> and that's from there, that's kind of been what I've been doing for the last seven years is showing the benefits to other people individually and in, in group settings. Yeah. Um, how about you tell us about the different uh, personal training that you did, like the truck. So you did the tribe program. I think that that's yeah. really interesting because it's um, been an experience where you've been teaching a group but it's not a sport it is very individual in the training yeah. yeah tribe is like small group personal training that we offered at our local health club and you know it is exercise is always going to be individual you can do it in group setting you can do it by yourself but the only person that can get your body moving is is yourself and i I mean, a group atmosphere definitely helps some people who are competitive, but, and I think that's a, a big part of it is just talking about, oh yeah, that, you know, that really sucked. Yeah, it really sucked for me too. And you, you know, you form a bond over hurting, hurting together, essentially. But with also, you know, working at the local health club, I worked with TriTech, which is like a high school it's a it. vocational tech yes school. vocational tech school exactly yeah and i worked with three different groups there kind of one that was focused on law fire and then pre pre physical therapy and uh you know you get a lot of different people there people who are there for a lot of different reasons and finding some way to get everybody to at least do something 
is always because it's always the overachievers, the people in the middle, and the you know the people who don't want to be there. They don't want. They wore their jeans, even <laughs> though they know every Friday that they're going to work out. <laughs> so you still you know oh well, my jeans are well you're here. <laughs> I think that we can all relate as parents, especially homeschooling parents, because, you know, we know what we would like our kids to be doing, or maybe we don't even know. We just know they should be doing something mm -hmm. you know, and uh, not being sure of exactly what that should be or how much time or how intense um, and how to channel our kids energy. Or maybe even we have kids who don't seem to have much extra energy and uh, exercise can help with that too but it's a hurdle mm -hmm. to get uh people to exercise and we know that because it's the same the same is true for grown-ups ourselves and it's the same for our kids so um yeah. what what can you what can we do during a homeschool day to encourage the more movement and and not just playing outside but like intentional movement that's going to help them become more what would you say it's not athletic is it strong it's, is it what what are we I'd going more for active exercise? more active I would say you know or muscle moving activity if, if maybe if that makes sense mm -hmm. physical activity or muscle strengthening activity okay. i think that's the way like the cdc and all those people kind of put it muscle strengthening activity um you know we have as homeschool parents you know you have your math curriculum you kind of know okay fifth graders should know this that and the other thing same with english you know okay this is you know we have even different levels like oh he can read at this level he reads at you know sixth grade level or college level and with exercise or health in general there isn't much of that that i know of for the homeschool i don't know if there is a curriculum or any kind of guidance like that but um it is a it's just like reading and writing it's a skill that you have to work on that you have to make intentional um you know not everybody enjoys nonfiction writing and not everybody enjoys a particular kind of activity for exercise but it's some it's a skill that you, you sometimes you have to have to do and you have to work on um as opposed to what they should do you know going outside and, and running around and playing is great but you want them to have a certain set of skills you want them to know how to do a push-up you want them to know how to do jumping jack and squats why do you want them to know that where you know where do you want them to be when they're 18 19 20 years old do you want them to you know oh they know how to go outside and learn and run and play you know taking the, the math example you want them to know how to do calculus or pre-calc or some form of algebra or geometry or something you know that by 19 years old they should be able to do x it's the same with uh, exercise and you have to be just as like you said intentional and it's not something we know how to be most people don't know how to be very intentional with mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense. yeah because when they are 18 or 19 they they aren't really going to be running around and playing outside anymore <laughs> no <laughs> if they've been sitting on the couch they're going to probably stay there right right but if they've learned because they've been made to or whatever, they've learned that they can run, then they know that that's, you know, they can do that on their own. Just, you know, like you, like you do. Exactly. It, yeah. Whether it's running or, you know, not a whole lot of people enjoy that either, but it, mm -hmm. it's nice to know. And I, there's a quote, but every, every man, or you could, you could say woman as well, should know the limits of their own strength. Mm. You should know how strong you could be. Not saying you have to get giant or jacked or anything like that, but the, the, the last thing you want to be or you want your kid to be is weak, essentially. Mm -hmm. Because they know, they they undeveloped be. potential. Exactly. And exactly. where they haven't even had the experience of 
getting stronger. And, um, you know, even just as a metaphor for so many things in life, the experience of I did this and I have sore muscles, but then I did it again and it wasn't quite so bad or something mm-hmm. that was difficult and hard at first and even caused, you know, whether minor, but caused some pain and suffering. Exactly. But on the other side, I could do the same thing now without that pain and suffering. I became stronger and there was value and benefit. It's true for exercise. And then that becomes a really valuable metaphor for so many things in life. Exactly. A hundred percent. You know, that same story is I could probably tell you two or three times where I was doing math with my dad and it was not fun. It was very (laughs) painful. There were tears and I didn't appreciate it at the time, but now I can do, you know, three times seven in my head. You know what I mean? There was a, a lesson to it. Yeah. And your kids might not appreciate you forcing them to do push-ups or, you know, forcing them to do push-ups and squats at the time. But when they're moving out of the house or something like that and they can, you know, pick up the bed frame by themselves, it's like, hey, that's mm-hmm. kind of nice. Mm-hmm. For sure. So what would homeschool PE look like if you were, so your oldest is not quite five, right? Five in about a month. Five so. in a month. And so if say, pretend he's 10 or 13, somewhere in there, what would homeschool PE that you designed look like? Homeschool PE, it'd be at least at least 10 minutes of multiple things, right? Probably 20 to 30 minutes of just running outside, you know, not just a general play, whether it's like actual running, like, Hey, you want to go do a mile with me? Sure. You know, either run with me or your mom outside and do something like that. But then spending at least 10 minutes of doing some, what we call, you know, muscle strengthening activity where it's push ups or squats or wall sits, jumping jacks, something that's going to build muscle tone Mm -hmm. that's good for um good for brain health good for your muscles it's good for your bones you know there's a principle that said principle specific adaptations Mm -hmm. to impose demands right your body's only going to get as strong or as developed as you make it so if you want strong healthy bones you need to put stress onto them with Mm -hmm. exercise yeah. So um, I have the problem of not actually being having very good form myself for doing um, a push up. My husband has informed me that my form is no good at all. <laughs> so it's a little bit um, can be intimidating to you even to think about requiring exercise of my kids and I before like I've tried to um, find a video or some kind of instruction that is fast and easy yeah a <laughs> and, how to kind of a thing yeah yeah Definitely. so you have something yes yes so you know you we talked about this earlier and I think it's kind of what got this conversation on homeschool PE going is, you know, you, you YouTube something like how to, you know, fun, easy workout at home. You click the video and it's somebody like in their underwear, essentially <laughs> a guy showing up, you know, the fitness industry is all about showing how fit the trainer is essentially. It's like, look how easy this is for me and look at my incredibly sculpted body. And so when you are for me as a parent, and for my future kids, I don't want them looking at content like that. There's no reason they should be. And I wouldn't want to put that kind of a video in front of my kids or myself even. And so what, when we kind of got this conversation conversation of homeschool PE going is we wanted a nice, clean environment that would teach um, parents on what to do and how to do it. And also provide a different voice for the kids to hear, to tell them what to do, right? 
go out and squat. But when it's mom doing it versus maybe some guy on a screen <laughs> telling them to, you know, this is how you do a push up. This is how you do a squat. This is going to be your exercise for the day. You know, good luck and let me know how it goes. Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that is what um, we're going to be, what I offer here. Um, I'm creating a semester long homeschool PE program. It's going to be 16 weeks starting September 1st, ending like December uh, 14th. We're going to have two uh, exercise videos for, for every week, as well as one to two kind of health education where we talk about, you know, human anatomy, graded, graded G, and uh, <laughs> yeah. how exercise and proper nutrition kind of help that. It's a little bit dangerous calling it health since some things are sometimes categorized as health that you're not going to be covering. Exactly. And that's, <laughs> I think, one of the big reasons why homeschooling is, you know, it's been big for a while, but getting even bigger is because of health. So. <laughs> yes. Okay. We won't go. We won't go there. We won't go, we'll stop it there. You all know. Yeah. <laughs> but even so, whether it's those things like it's, exercising and you know my kids learned push-ups best it was a different uncle it was uncle daniel not uncle yeah. and it was the older kids but he just got him down on the ground and he's like no like this and then he's like tell him no like this and like oh well now they know how to do a push-up because someone cool showed them how it's not just mom saying i think you should be doing this do this exactly and it was more motivating it was more inspirational and they made them more excited about it. And so I was like, you know what? We need an uncle to do some homeschool PE. <laughs> exactly. And to be fair, I'm pretty sure Uncle Daniel also taught me how to do push-ups. <laughs> You've got a good instructor there. And that's exactly what we're what we're offering here is instruction for that coming from somebody else, which mm-hmm. is always really helpful. And, you know, it's for the kids, but that doesn't mean, especially if your kids are in the, like, I'd say six to nine range, having mom or dad doing it with them is, it can, it can only help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, and the things like the healthy habit component of the program are like someone else's voice saying, no, no, really, this is why, um, vegetables are good for you. This is why you need to be drinking water. And, you know, some of those things where we tell our kids, but sometimes, actually all the time, we all just need multiple voices, I think, reminding us and telling us the right thing to do, because you never know how it's going to, how or when um, it's going to connect with someone. So they need multiple channels, (laughs) giving them good information. Uh, How long will your workout videos be for kids? So the workout videos themselves are about five minutes, but that's just me going over this is the exercise we're doing today. I'll go through like a round of it and then it's up to you guys to do it at home. I'm not going to be like, it's not like beach body for kids where (laughs) I'll be up there on your screen saying, okay, we're going to go down to do 10 more pushups. So you got five more rounds. Um, you know, part of exercise is learning how to do it on, do it on your own. Right. Mm. And so we'll help you get there. We'll get you like, Hey, you know, you have 10 squats, 10 push ups, 10 jumping jacks. You're going to do that for five rounds. Good luck and have fun. And I'll, you know, of course there'll be demonstration videos for how to do each of those, mm-hmm. but it's kind of up to you and your kid or your kid to to do it so uh the video is about five minutes but then the workouts themselves in the start of the semester they're about eight to 12 minutes long but as the semester progresses the workouts will progress and i think the longest one is like 20 minutes okay but they really are they they come from that homeschool perspective where it's like here's the material here are some suggestions and it's totally flexible for then how you end up working that, working that in. They're not live. Exactly. They're not live. You it's, don't have to make a time. It's recorded. I think 
especially at the beginning, what we are going to do is just uh, do those demonstration, like this is how it works, like on repeat, like, no, we're gonna watch this and do it along, alongside five times or whatever, but, and, you know, just do it in different ways because, um, exactly. and then sometimes just take that list of like 10 squats, 10 push ups, whatever, and give that checklist to them and send them outside without any screens or videos. And, yeah, I think that's a part of the goal. The goal is not have exercise and be a screen thing, but exercise exactly. be a outside thing. We're like yes. equipping them. And the yeah, you guys will be given all the material for that to where you could do it. You could print out whatever you needed. Um, what else was I going to say? We do have, and you can probably see that the free five minute workout for yeah. for kids. Like, that is an example of what it's going to look like. You're going to get like 16 weeks worth of that. So about 30. <coughs> nope, there we go. Sorry. Oh, I muted you. I meant I'm, yeah. I, I muted you so that I could sneeze in front of everyone. There we go. Nobody heard me bless you. So I'll say it again. Bless you. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're pretty much going to. So if you click that link, follow that through, put your email in, not only will that put you in a subscriber list so that you can stay up to date with the different products that uh, I'll be offering, but you'll also uh, get like an example of what a semester is going to look like. Mm -hmm. That's it's a fun little video, so yes, be sure and check that out. And I mean, that's going to be the start of our homeschool PE fitness. Is just that that video right there. <laughs> And we and that's the, the best part about kind of going back to doing it on your own time is, you know, I talked earlier about doing homework with my dad and he, he, you know, I'm sure working with math or whatever with your kids, it's the same thing. There are just times you get just so frustrated with not your kid, but just, or your kids get frustrated with the current math problem. It's, they're just not, it's just not sinking in. Um, and that's like almost the perfect time to get, get them out and get them focused on on something else that's like almost the perfect time to get them to do some kind of quick activity mm -hmm. to help them you know refresh right get your get your mind off of it think about something else refocus revitalize re-energize and get ready to take on some more math problems more english or whatever kind of homeschool stuff you have coming their way that's right. It, it expands my repertoire beyond just go run five laps. <laughs> exactly. And come back and we'll try again. <laughs> now, if they enjoy that, you know, you can send them my way and I'll help coach them to uh, run more laps. But yeah, yeah, no one's enjoying that. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to convince people. So, how about families that have an age range? Um, how is do you see PE as being a group activity? And how about if there are like big age gaps, how can um, we combine kids or do it as a group activity when there are multiple ages? Or should it be? Yeah, um, I think, you know, we talked about Tribe and we talked about tri -tech, and even if they were in like a uh, public school setting. There are in middle school. I'm not even too sure how old middle schoolers are. Um, but like, I don't know, nine to 12 or nine to 13. Usually they're in a similar PE situation. Same with high school. Um, I know a little bit more about that, but you have 13 year olds and you have 18 year olds in high school gym. Um, and they're all doing essentially the same thing. Now, depending on their experience with it, they might do more. You know, if the workout is, you know, you do these exercises for three times. If your high schooler finishes before the middle schooler, you might be like, okay, well, or the eighth grader, well, not eighth, or the eight year old or the seven year old, you might just encourage yeah. the high schooler to do a little bit more or work at the same pace. With Troy, that's what we have people do with different functional, well, different um, exercise levels. If you finish first, you're not done for the day. <laughs> you got to go and you got to work with and encourage the guy who's behind. Mm. And so that's something you could, you could do with your different age groups. If there is a difference in um, 
yeah, exercise or fitness. Mm-hmm. Have them do it, and then be the the good older brother or sister and work with the younger ones. Yeah, or even like how many how many squats can you do in one minute and and keep score because yeah, sometimes the have, older brothers don't want to be outdone. <laughs> yes, and we definitely have some of that kind of stuff in there. So how about if you have teenage, probably boys, um, who would rather be in front of a screen than outside? Yeah. What What do you do? I mean, sure, I'm sure you were never like that as never. a teenage boy. Oh, yeah. I never watched TV at all. <laughs> no, when I got grounded, I definitely didn't cry when mom took away the TV. That wasn't me. <laughs> no, I got a, a coach I really look up to. Uh, guy named Bill Bowerman who was a coach at the University of Oregon back in like the 60s and 70s. He had a parable that I'll share with you. You have a mule and a farmer. Farmer tries to get the mule to work. Mule won't work. Tries to get him to eat. Won't eat. Tries to get him to drink and he won't drink. Farmer gets frustrated. He calls in a mule skinner, somebody who like tames and trains mules. It's called a mule skinner. Mule Skinner doesn't talk to the farmer, doesn't even look at the mule, goes right to the barn, grabs a two by four, walks up to the mule, bam, hits him in between the eyes, mule buckles, bam, hits him again, mule faints. (laughs) The farmer gets frustrated and, you know, that's supposed to help him to work. That's supposed to help him to eat and drink. And a far, uh, mule skin, I just looks at the farmer and says, I can tell you don't know a darn thing about mules. It says, if you want them to do something, you have to get their attention first. Now, that's kind of, I've never actually hit anybody with a 2.4 as a disclaimer. That is not what you're recommending. It, it not recommending at all. But as somebody who's been a mule himself a couple times in life, um, I can tell you that. Well, at the time, I didn't appreciate the proverbial two by four. My parents didn't hit me with that per se. <laughs> Maybe a, a spatula once or twice, but I had it coming too. <laughs> um, as somebody yeah, who's been hit with a pro, uh, proverbial two by four a couple times in my life, I can tell you, you don't appreciate it. As a parent, having a discipline, you never appreciate it at the time. As a kid, you don't appreciate getting it at the time, but years down the road, you know, I knew, I, I learned a lot from it, right? And so I don't know if that's for coaching or for parenting. You have to make sure you, you can't just tell them what's good for them. You can't just tell them, eat your broccoli. You can't just tell them, don't watch so much TV, get up and do some squats. You can, and sometimes they listen. If yours do, good. Um, if they don't, if they're mulish, you got to whip out some kind of a two by four. <laughs> So that way you can crack their skull open and put that information in there. <laughs> you have a a niece over here who's a little bit shocked, but Uh-oh. Uh-oh. you know what the two by four is. Maybe she needs to know what proverbial means. <laughs> there was a uh, had a catechism teacher, Rusty. You'd always say this if you for, if you didn't remember what. The catechism you're supposed to remember he'd always say something like well i'm gonna drill a hole in your skull and fill it with peanut butter <laughs> and you're like why you know why do i have this pe- oh that's right i was supposed to remember question and answer 13 dang it <laughs> that way you wouldn't forget and it's yeah you gotta find ways to get those those kids moving yeah and um I think that point where just knowing that they often aren't going to appreciate it at the time and our goal doesn't need to be getting them to appreciate it at the time. It just needs to be getting that momentum started and they'll appreciate it later. Yes. It's, it's true. I like to tell my kids, you'll thank me when you're 30. Hey, hundred percent. You're you know, all 30, but <laughs> I'm almost there. I almost appreciate them. <laughs> no, it's, it's like I said earlier, you know, I didn't appreciate doing math with my dad at the time, but 
I can do seven times three in my head now. You know, if my dad didn't sit me down and show me how to do it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how. Same with, same with exercise, right? I wouldn't be here if my dad was like, hey, you're going to do some sport. You're going to do, how about cross country? Oh, yeah, sure. Running, how hard can that be? <laughs> and, you know, that was finding a solution that's not just mom saying, go run. Exactly. And that's what it is. It's because if mama told me to go run, I'd take the dog for a walk. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wouldn't run. And it had it's helpful to have, you know, for for my parents, it was the team, it was the coach telling me, hey, you should do this. Okay, come. If my if my dad was my coach, I probably wouldn't do it. But having somebody else there who has a plan, who knows what to do, who has experience in it is is beneficial. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I like how you, when you were telling about your own experience earlier, um, just recognizing the fact that you, even when you started, when you didn't do it, you didn't start because you wanted to. Yeah. You started because you had to. And you didn't always like it at the time. I but all the time. <laughs> you, not all the time. But you've experienced the benefits enough now exactly that that makes you want it but so you have to get over that hurdle and know that the benefits are better or worth it yes. before you're going to want to do it yourself so exactly. it's it's a real blessing that we give to our kids as parents when we make them do something and mm -hmm. sometimes the way we make them do things doesn't work and we just have to try different two by fours exactly <laughs> So is there anything in the program? Let's let's talk about first just this free five minute version because yes. it's pretty it's the same kind of thing as the other exercise videos are gonna be. Is there anything that wouldn't be good for younger kids, like toddler, like your kids' oh, age? Yeah. Would you do this something like that with them? For sure. I mean, when Sarah and I especially during like the pandemic when everything was closed, we do workouts at home and we didn't make the kids do push-ups and squats, but you know, they would, they do something like, you know, I could bring Isaac in here and have him show you a push-up and you'd be like, eh, is that really a push-up? But there is modeling behavior for your kids is very important, right? People who tend to read, Parents who tend to read, I should say, tend to have kids who read a lot as well. And it's the same with activity. They see you, especially at that younger age. And there's a lot of like research with this, you know, parents who are physically active and enjoy doing physical activities, guess what? They're kids. Apple doesn't far from far, fall far from the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's reading or exercise or anything. So if you want your, I mean, that's a big thing. You want your kids. I want my kids to be better than me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say my, I'm better than my dad, but i'm sure he kind of wished the, the same for me and we want we want that for our kids if we're not physically active that doesn't that doesn't matter too much right but we want we want our kids to be better if yeah does that make sense it does and it's not that um we get that by making them do like telling them to do things yeah it happens at that younger age it happens by us trying to get better too alongside them yes and if you have a hard time with that i mean i do offer online personal training as well if it's something you want to get started and learning how to do having a set of training wheels helps and that's that's why i'm on a set of training wheels eventually i'd like for you to go off on your own and be on your own bike but for a while we got to sit you down and teach you how to do it so so the videos and you could just watch the free one and see what see what you think they are um so i think maybe the question is because it's definitely not like anyone in their underwear doing the exercises no exactly fully fully clothed fully clothed <laughs> that's yeah if you're at, yeah if it's what's different from this video versus any other video on youtube it's that you know the content is clean you know there's no <laughs> music in the background that you have to worry about there's no yeah, it's 
it's clean content. Yes. It's worth but it's also it not unsafe. You know, that sometimes some exercises really are too much for kids. Oh yeah. But you're just doing the basic jump, how to do a jumping jack. You yeah, know? Exactly. Yeah. Jump. I'm not saying, hey, yeah, put this 145 pound bar on your back and squat it for a couple reps. <laughs> it's, just, it's all body weight exercise. Um, now, if your kid is older, say like eight years or older or something like that, and you have a set of dumbbells or kettlebell at home and you feel safe with them using that, we have these little, you know, they can, they can definitely use that. But with kids like Isaac's age, you know, almost five years old or even Lily's age, we thought it'd be kind of cute. We got like these little two pound weights and this like little tiny kettlebell, which sounds cute with, and you think it looks cute and it kind of does, but you know, they start dropping it and stuff like that and go, okay, yeah, that's a trip to the ER I don't want to risk. So <laughs> toddlers. It's not worth it. Like the benefit, them with the benefit they get. Reward ratio, not quite yeah. there. But when they're old enough to understand, like, I should hold on to this. It would really hurt if I dropped it on my foot. <laughs> that's where you can start to experiment with adding in something. Yeah. Yeah. And when say you have all your kids from teenager to five-year-old oh, yeah. um, doing these exercises as the kind of thing where you can be you know pushing that teenager to like i don't think that you're you're doing it quite like he is mm -hmm. and trying to get them to improve their form but the three-year-old five-year-old you just want them having fun with it because that's it's the experience of, oh, this is just something I do that you want to be growing in them. Yes. I mean, just like you would sit them down and work on any kind of a, any kind of a skill, whether it's reading or writing, it's not made as much of a priority, mm -hmm. but it, it really is. It is. So thank you everyone for joining us and for asking your questions. And uh, I'm excited for Coach Kevin to show my kids how to do a correct jumping jack uh -huh. <laughs> and push up because we all look a little bit awkward. Not, not I'm looking forward, forward to what? virtually doing that for you. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to be using this video right here that Kevin is um, providing for free. So you just click that green button and uh, it's a great video that walks you through and walks your kids through how to do, I think it's five exercises. Yeah. Five exercises, like five reps for five minutes. Yeah. And so then that's just a fun, quick thing. I'm thinking that we can even just add this onto the end of our morning time as a quick Okay, we've been sitting and doing um, mind work. And before we move into math after morning time, we're gonna do this quick five minute set of exercises. So that's what I'm planning on doing. And you can try it out and see how it might work into your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you guys. You guys have been great. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>